Hello, Booktube. Well, as you can see, I'm up in Vermont. <laughs> I, I packed up the bean who's staring at me from off camera, and we came up to a uh, tiny little town, Vermont, where it is blisteringly cold and slated to get worse. It's going to fluctuate way down in the lower ranges of, of the Fahrenheit scale, but I think Tuesday night, it's going to be 20 below. <laughs> 20 below zero, not 20 below freezing. Uh, but nevertheless, hot weather, windy weather, rainy weather, cold weather. When I'm in Vermont, we go book hunting. <laughs> and uh, we did today. I don't imagine this will be the last time, but we went to, there's a, there's a charity shop that uh, we've watched. Uh, I'm staying with Margaret of Riches and Reads. And if you've watched his channel, you know that he goes to the charity shop all the time. And they're really good. <laughs> they're really, really good. They have everything. They don't just have books, but their book selection. Uh, Mark has told me a, a few times that the the ultimate feeder source of a lot of the charity shops around here are all of the colleges. The, there's there's a, a satellite of colleges all around here. They are the intake, and then they eventually these things feed their way down into the charity shops, and that's got to be the only explanation because you look at these, you know, just a strip mall charity shop here, in, and you think, okay, well, if they have a book section, I know exactly what's going to be in that book section. No, you're wrong. You're always wrong. I'm always wrong. I always find things. Uh, and I, we went to one of those shops today, and I found a bunch of books. <laughs> I want to show them to you. Uh, and the first three are romances, and the first romance author, I've taken a chance. I've heard her name. think she might be good. It's uh, Jane Austen. <laughs> it's Pride and Prejudice. I got, uh, this is Scholastic Book Services. I'd never seen this edition of Pride and Prejudice before, and I love the book so much. But why not? <laughs> why not? Since all of these things are like a penny a piece or something like that. Then uh, after Jane Austen, I got two other mass market romances, and they are here. Let me get the schmutz off the cover here. They are uh, the two ends of the spectrum. If you watch uh, my friend Sarah, the bookish knitter, romance booktuber par excellence. Uh, she has many, many favorites. She loves romances, and, and uh, so do I. Uh, but there's a particular note that enters her voice when she talks about contemporary cowboy romances. I think, I think they uh, they get her spurs a jangling, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and I liked the, I've liked some of them before I started watching her channel, but I read a lot more of them now, uh, and definitely have have uh, established a sweet tooth. Uh, but. So that was one of the two romances that I got today. is a contemporary romance by Lori Wilde. I know I have some of her books back at Hyde Cottage, but I know I don't have this one. This is The Cowboy and the Princess, <laughs> where you've got the young woman running away from the brooding cowboy on the front cover, and one kind of dog. And then on the step back, he seems to have caught her. <laughs> And it's a different kind of dog. There's a different. There, there are two dogs in this story, uh, so we'll see. Uh, it's, it looks sweet. I'll, I'll gladly uh, gobble it up. And then the next romance that I got is the other end of the spectrum, and it's it's my end of the spectrum. That is Regency romances, which I, I they, if you had to pick a favorite sub sub genre of romance, that would be mine. And I got this book years and years ago when it first came out. Uh, I was amazed to find it today. I would never have spotted the box that this was in, if Mark hadn't pointed it out to me. Uh, and for those of you who are curious, uh, Frida w is welcome in all the places that we go, and she was a dream in this charity shop. She was right next to me the whole time. Whenever she got a little bit bored, she would scream at strangers to come over and pet her. <laughs> no, one's, no one's allowed to be near her without coming and giving her attention. and Nobody seemed to object, because she's really cute. Uh, but I got this book when it came out originally. Uh, Let's find out when that was. Two, early 2000? Oh, 1994. I got this when it came out originally. This is by Christina Dodd, and it is the greatest lover in all England. And when I got this originally, it did not have this garish thing on the cover. That's not a sticker. That can't come off. It's, it's advertising that this was sold for $3.99, which was a low price at the time. But this... The original cover had the original artwork, a walkway going up to, to this guy's castle, where I guess... He keeps all the buttons that he's not using on his unbuttoned shirt. Uh, I, I got this in the 90s and read it then, liked it, and it disappeared, as things do. And I never thought I would see it again in either way, either with this thing or without it. And I did. 
because you never know what you're going to see uh, up in Vermont. Uh, then this next one, once again, I, I did a, a library tour. Uh, I filmed a library tour just now, and I mentioned that one of my choices was uh, definitely not influenced by where I'm filming. I am in Vermont. Uh, this is another one. This is a quintessential Vermont author. This is Dorothy Canfield Fisher, and this is Seasoned Timber. It's beautiful uh, trade paperback of hers. Uh, who is this? A hard scrabble classic is the imprint from the University Press of New England. Uh, and these I don't ha I didn't I don't have any Dorothy Canfield Fisher at all until now. I don't think she exists in ebook form. I don't I, I once had a whole shelf of hardcovers and they they also disappeared with time and I never see her at the Brattle Bookshop in Boston. So happy to have this. And a perfect I mean I have a I have a a wee little room here at the old house, and I'm, I'm filling the bookshelves there. I don't think I'll bring Seasoned Timber back with me uh, to Hyde Cottage. I think I'll just leave it here. Or maybe I just won't go back to Hyde Cottage. <laughs> oh, there's that gurgling pipe sound. <laughs> happens every time. <laughs> uh, then this next one, well familiar. I have a copy back at Hyde Cottage, but I don't have a copy here. Uh, I've praised this to the skies a million times. This is Stacey Schiff's biography of Cleopatra. Uh, an amazing, amazing work. Just you, just when you think you've read the last word on such a familiar subject, a book like this comes along and makes it all fresh. Uh, so when I saw the hardcover for 50 cents or whatever it was, I grabbed it. And then uh, and then we have the return of Colleen McCullough, which we'll finish up here. Uh, because I, when I did, I did a library tour just, just a bit earlier, and there was a Colleen McCullough book that just happened to crop up there. And I, uh, I got another one of hers today. It was cheap. And I won't be logging it back to Boston. I'll just leave it here. But it is time that I reread it. Uh, and that is The First Man in Rome, the first book in her massive multi book series chronicling the death of the Roman Republic and the rise of the early empire. So, this first book, which came out in, I want to say, 1990. Uh, yeah, 1990. Uh, this, this first book came out in 1990. This is a little sun damage, so you really can't make out the, the title of the book. You can make out her name. Uh, this book, despite the title, does not deal with Julius Caesar. Obviously, this deals with Marius, a, a Roman politician and, and strongman in the generation before Julius Caesar, who pushed the boundaries of, of right to the edge of what a free republic could tolerate trained the army, basically made it loyal just to him, to see if maybe uh, there was no upper limit to what he could extract from the state that had given him everything. And unbeknownst to Marius at the time, he was setting a template. And no, <clears throat> we won't, I, won't, I won't stray into contemporary politics, but no free republic can stand that template. Once a template is in order where a strong man can secure the allegiance of armed forces and take over the state, what, if the state is lucky enough to wrest control back from that person, he, his family, and everyone he's ever had cannolis with must be executed. You can't leave them alive. You can't let them describe what they did. You can't let them write their memoirs. You have to throw them head first off the Tarpeian Rock. It's the only way. And Rome didn't do that. Rome didn't do that with Marius, and then they didn't do it with Sulla, and then they didn't do it with Cinna, and then they, they didn't do it with Julius Caesar. And that's only a, a, a strong republic, the Roman Republic had lasted for centuries, can only take so many of that before it just dies. Uh, but this, this book is uh, basically the story of Marius. It, it, we meet him in the fullness of his health, and it's hugely, hugely researched. I mentioned in my library tour that Colleen McCullough is not a good writer. She's a, a leaden, unimaginative, blunt force instrument, and that this that this book raises that to operatic levels. There's a gigantic chunk of exposition in the back where she describes every single source that she used. There are also illustrations. She does the drawings throughout the book. Uh, this is one of them. That is Quintus Sertorius, a famous rogue general who had a pet fawn. Uh, the, the drawings are by Colleen McCullough, and I think you will agree with me that they are bad. <laughs> and, and yet, in her author's note at the back, she says, well, like all talented artists, I have to use my imagination when the, the, the sculptures 
don't provide details. I read that back in 1990 and laughed out loud in a room full of eagles. I said, well, you're not a talented artist, <laughs> not even close. How could even your editor tell you that? <laughs> but, but it has been a while. I read this, I, I ignored it completely when it was in hardcover. It came out in a very distinctive mass market paperback and I read that. And then I think probably in the mid 90s I read it again, but it's been a long time. That, that, it hasn't happened since then. So now I have a copy. So there you go. That was my book expedition today, just on a Sunday. With first man in Rome, can't really make it out. I might use a, a pen to highlight that since this is just a, a junk copy. And then uh, Stacy Schiff's Cleopatra, Season Timber by Dorothy Canfield Fisher, an author I really like, uh, and uh, three mass market paperbacks, The Greatest Lover in All England, uh, The Cowboy and the Princess, where naturally I'm concerned with the drama of the dogs. I don't know what it is, but I'm curious to find out. And this weird scholastic paperback of Pride and Prejudice. I, I got it because it was cheap and because I'm, I don't have to make room for these. I'm, I'm filling a library here. Uh, so there you go. That was, that was a, a book outing for today. Uh, more to come. I guarantee, I can almost certainly guarantee there will be more to come. Uh, so I'll, I'll wrap this up for now and we'll see each other then. <laughs> Thank you, Booktube.